What do we have here? There is a woman called Deborah, and there are people that do something bad to her. So she assembles an army and. Didn't you want to go watch this new Marvel movie? Hmm. What? Yes. Yes, I'm on my way out, actually. What are you doing? You want to help out with the script or what? Ah, so that's what this is. You're writing a movie script. Yes, I had cool idea in Dream last night, and I wanted to write down in case I become a big guy in Hollywood one day. Okay, this seems familiar though. But anyway, I'm not sure what I'm reading makes any sense. For example, you write that Deborah works at the falafel stand, and... Yes, she inherited this from father after he dies in tragic speedboating accident. Yeah, but how can she assemble an army if she was never in the military or has any experience with... Idea is not finished, uh, you can help if you want, but I take main credit. Wow, thanks for the offer. I'm sure I can give you a few pointers for Deborah's adventure. She is called Deborah. Deborah? Deborah. 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 Deborah? Deborah. Deborah. Maybe I can change name. To what? How about same name like this English wizard girl, Hermine? Hermione? I'm sick of lying. We made a mistake. I have to go. He's gonna be wondering where I am. We were not supposed to leave. Yes, we were. Goodbye, Jacko. We have to go back, Catherine. We have to go back. Thanks for watching the season finale of Missing. Stay tuned for more. So how was movie? It was spectacular. I bought it on Disney Plus on the way home actually, so we can watch it again tomorrow. Ah, uh, I don't know. After Thanos storyline I lost interest in superhero movies. They always repeat same things. Bad guys chasing good guys, good guys chasing bad guys, big explosions and always something from the sky crashing on Earth. Well, Black Widow has so many fresh ideas and differences from the rest of the Marvel movies, and the action scenes are just pure awesomeness. What about story and characters? Amazing characters and very cool storyline. Really? So what happened in movie? Well, it all starts with a flashback to Natasha Romanoff's past, where it seems like she has a good life with two loving parents and a little sister. There is twist? Exactly, her parents, Alexei and Melina, are in fact Russian undercover agents, whose mission is to steal important intel from S.H.I.E.L.D. Even her little sister is fake. Interesting. Uh, what about real family? They were killed by the boss of her fake parents, General Drakov. So he is main bad guy, huh? Yes, a very powerful one. Uh, but why do Russian spies need kids for the mission? Well, they don't, but it's probably some kind of training to prepare them for what's to come. You see, General Drakov was kidnapping children for a super soldier program. So it's a Russian version of what they did to Captain America? Exactly, but against their will. So Alexei and Melina have to run from the American authorities and manage to flee to Cuba with the girls, where the general is waiting for them. Then Natasha and her sister Yelena are drugged and brought to the Red Room, where their training begins. Cool. So in this movies we see how Natasha becomes the Black Widow. 
kind of, it's shown for a minute or so in the opening credits and then we immediately jump to the present time. What? So what is the rest of the movie? Well, the movie takes place shortly after the events of Captain America Civil War. Natasha was on the run from her own government after violating the Sokovia Accords, remember? Ah, yes, when all superheroes suddenly were not friends anymore and had a big fight on German airport and after smashing each other for a couple of times they become friends again. Um, yeah, exactly. Anyway, Natasha flees to Norway to lay low for a while. She is friends with Jennifer Lopez? Why is J-Lo living in Norway? No, lay low. She goes into hiding from the government. Ah, so Jenny from the block is not in the movie? No, Hakeem, she's not. Too bad. So what happens in Norway? Well, she stays at a safe house there set up by a guy named Mason, a former agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and friend of hers who still has a lot of connections. He also leaves her suitcase, which contains a message from her sister and a couple of vials with a mysterious red substance in them. What is that? Super serum? No, actually it's kind of the opposite of that. We discover that Natasha's sister Yelena is also a black widow now, and on a mission she brutally murders a woman fleeing her and a group of other black widows. So her sister is a bad guy? No, that's where the red vials come into play. You see, General Drakoff has all the Black Widows put under some kind of chemical mind control so that they listen to everything he says. But this red substance is some kind of antidote, and after Yelena murders the innocent woman, some of that powder is released and Yelena comes back to her senses. So she contacts sister to help her defeat General? Yes, but Natasha can't believe that Drakov is behind this because you see she already killed him during one of her shield missions after she switched sides. What? Bad guy is killed in beginning of movie? Is there a cool scene where they fight to the death? Not really, she puts a bomb in the backpack of his little daughter, and when she goes to meet her father there's a big explosion. Black Widow explodes little girl to kill the bad guy? Kind of, but don't worry, not only the general but also his daughter survived the explosion. This is stupid. Anyway, Natasha wants answers, and so she leaves to meet her sister. But on her way to get some gas for the car, somebody shoots a rocket at her, which makes her car explode and roll over multiple times. What? Black Widow is killed in the beginning of the movie? No, she climbs out of the wreckage and is okay. So Black Widow gets superhuman strength in Norway? No, she just wants some gas for... So Black Widow gets super strong suit like Iron Man from X-Shield guy? No, she's going to the petrol station to refuel... So how she survive big car explosion accident if she just normal human with some karate and pistol training? Um... Actually, she also survives falling off the roof of a large building and another car accident where the car rolls down a flight of stairs into a subway station. This is stupid. She's never in danger at any point in the movie because the story takes place before the Infinity War, dummy. So they don't want the movie to be exciting at any point. But she's not that safe because after she wakes up and gets out of the car wreck, she's immediately attacked by the Taskmaster. What? An accountant shoots rocket at her car and attacks her? No, not tax. Taskmaster. It's a special soldier of the general who possesses almost photographic reflexes and can mimic the fighting techniques of others by just observing them. Wow, that sounds like really strange strong bad guy. Yes, the Taskmaster is very powerful, and the character has a mask, so it's really surprising who's behind the- It is General's daughter, isn't it? It is. So she not only survive explosion but become super soldier with special abilities? Yes, you see her father put a chip inside her head. And? That's it. The, the chip thing. So daughter is damaged in explosion and her father puts USB stick in her head and now she can copy fighting moves of everybody? Yes, basically. This is stupid. Anyway, she attacks Natasha and tries to get her hands on the red vials. How does Taskmaster know where to find Natasha and that she has this red powder with her? I guess they, uh, they probably, uh, I don't know. So who wins fight? Nobody. The Taskmaster manages to get the suitcase and Natasha jumps in the water and escapes. But it turns out that Natasha somehow managed to take out the vials when the Taskmaster wasn't looking and hide them under her shirt. So the suitcase is actually empty. Red powder is destroyed when she jumps in water, yes? No, there's not even a scratch on the vials when she gets out. So Natasha goes to Budapest to meet her sister, who is staying in a safe house Mason set up for her. And when they meet, there's an awesome fight, where we see how skilled they are. Why they fight? Well, they meet for the first time after years of being apart, and they don't know if they can trust each other. If there is no trust, why does her sister send her suitcase with valuable bad guy antidote? They stop fighting anyway because the safe house is infiltrated by other Black Widows sent by the General and they have to flee. 
Now they have to find Dracov, but Yelena doesn't know where he is, so they figure Alexei can tell them the location of the Red Room. The only problem is that Alexei was imprisoned years ago for political reasons and is being kept in a Russian high security facility in the middle of nowhere. So how they get to him? Mason gets them a helicopter and... What is with this Mason guy? Every time somebody needs something, he show up with it. Well, he has a lot of connections and his services are probably not cheap, so... How much they pay him for all the housing, equipment and transportation? In the movie, uh, not one cent. He is very stupid. So they take the helicopter and fly to the prison to break Alexei out. And it's a very impressive scene, let me tell you. Is there a cool and intelligent sequence of them infiltrating prison to release him? No, not really. They mostly stay in the helicopter and instead send him an earpiece hidden in a dubious gift, which somehow makes it through security. And tell him through that to break out of the prison immediately. And that's what he literally does. How he break out? He basically breaks a metal door and gets out. Is he superhuman? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, Alexei is also known as the Red Guardian, basically the Russian version of Captain America. Really? How does he look like? That is supposed to be Captain Russia? Fat beard guy in red suit? Yes. So if he has superhuman strength and can knock down prison door, why he didn't break out sooner? He's a patriot, I guess. More like he is stupid. Anyway, Yelena shoots a rocket at a prison guard tower, which causes an avalanche to come down and bury the whole prison from which they just managed to save Alexei in the nick of time. So they kill all the prisoners and guys working there to feed their families for one Russian spy that maybe knows where the bad guy is? Well, if you put it that way... This is horrible. Speaking of knowing where the bad guy is, unfortunately Alexei doesn't know where he is. But he knows somebody who might know... Horrible fate for poor Russian prison guards. You might have guessed it. It's Melina, who turns out to be not only a Black Widow herself, but also a scientist who developed the mind control technology for the General. Their fake parents are not good people. Not really, but they're the only ones they have, so after meeting their mother and her demonstrating the mind control technology by making a cute piggy almost commit suicide, they forgive them and after a little talk, Alexei and Melina switch sides and join them to take down General Drakov once and for all. So where is Drakov? Turns out that the Red Room is literally above the radar. It's a flying fortress in the sky. What? Bad guy is living in flying castle? Exactly. This is stupid. So the gang is actually captured during the family reunion and taken to the Red Room immediately. After all the searching, they are just delivered to the destination by bad guys? Yes. And while the Red Guardian and Natasha are put into a cell, Yelena is chained to an operating table soon to be cut open, and Milena is brought before the General himself. The Taskmaster is also there, and we not only learn who the Taskmaster really is, but there's another big reveal before that. Prison guards survive the avalanche like daughter survive explosion? No, Drakov sees through Melina's disguise. You see, before they were captured, she used face swapping technology to switch places with Natasha. So the one in the cell with the Red Guardian is actually Melina, who happens to be the person that designed the cells and therefore is able to break them out easily. She also helps out Yelena by pointing her to a knife she hid on her before they were captured, and Yelena also manages to flee. Why didn't she just tell Natasha how to get out of cell instead of doing face switch? I don't know. The face swapper was probably lying around near them when the agents came to capture them. This is not clever technology. If I switch face with my grandfather Ali, everybody will see old hairy body of his and know this is not me immediately. Anyway, Natasha is the one in front of the general, and when he sends the taskmaster away to kill Alexei and Melina, she sees her chance to end things once and for all. So she pulls out a gun and... Shoots him in the face? She tries to, but you see there's another clever surprise in store for her. Unbeknownst to her, the general has installed a pheromone lock in all the widows. What program he installed on his windows? No, there is a chemical lock in all black widows, preventing them from harming the general because of his smell. So she's forced to do the only thing to break the lock. She holds her breath and shoots him in face? No, I guess she can't because of the pheromones. So she goes to other side of room and shoots him in face? N no, that wouldn't work. I think. This generally smelly guy, I guess. So what she do? She slams her head on the table and breaks her nose. This is stupid. I once got soccer ball in my face and there was so much water in my eyes that I couldn't see anything for 30 minutes. She is Black Widow, so she's been through worse, I guess. And because the general for some reason showed her exactly how to log into his supercomputer and access all his data on the Black Widow program before, she can now copy all the data and save them. General is really stupid guy, huh? Well, not that stupid. He calls over all the widows training in the Red Room and manages to escape while Natasha deals with them. Oh-ho. 
So there is epic fight between lots of Black Widows. For a couple of seconds, yes, then Yelena shows up with the red vials, throws them at the Widows who regain control of their minds and are good now. That's disappointing. Meanwhile, Melina destroys the engines of the Red Room and the whole thing starts falling from the sky. That sounds familiar. So the General tries to escape in a helicopter, but Yelena catches up to him and takes out the aircraft's propeller right above him, destroying the helicopter and killing the General for good. What about his smelly lock? She break her nose too before doing that? I don't think so. Anyway, the explosion blasts her off the air carrier, and Natasha sees that, grabs a parachute, and jumps after her sister. Let me guess, the big thing from the sky crashes to Earth, all the good guys survive and all the bad guys die. Not exactly, the Taskmaster survives, and there is a a brief fight between her and Natasha on the ground, but Natasha blows some red dust in her face and they make peace. General's daughter make peace with the woman who put bomb in her backpack as a little girl to kill her and her father? Yes. I don't want to watch this movie. Come on, that's not all. Lieutenant General Ross and his men catch up to them. Remember, they are still after her because of the events in Civil War. She quickly says goodbye to her parents and sister who flee with the Taskmaster and other widows in a plane. Why they don't take Natasha with them? Um, not enough room on the plane, I guess. So how does she get out of this tricky situation? We'll never know. Just as she goes to confront them, we jump two weeks ahead in time, and she's fine. Even has a new haircut and everything. And you like this movie? I love it. You changed my mind. You love it too? No, I don't want you to help with my script. Uh, Hakim, would you reconsider if I... What? I can't hear you, you have to get louder. <laughs>